We're back with another episode of Who's Your Myths and Legends. I'm Rebecca Wilhelm. I'm Mary Quigley. And I'm Hope Wilhelm. Join us as we dive into the spookier side of the Hoosier State. So what comes to your mind when you think of Indiana? Do you think of corn? Do you think of basketball? Do you think of the Indianapolis 500? Maybe you think of famous celebrities who were born in Indiana, like John Mellencamp or Michael Jackson. But as the saying goes, there was more than corn in Indiana. 92 counties make up the Hoosier State. In this podcast, we are going to discuss some Indiana folklore from each of these counties. If you are into tall tales, ghosts, or spooky legends, then this is a podcast you are not going to want to miss. Our episode today comes from the Hoosier State capital, Indianapolis. When you think of Indianapolis, what comes to your mind? Most people I've asked tell me that they picture the 500 racetrack or race cars. Some may even think of nice hotels, breweries, and the neat restaurants that are in downtown. Indianapolis has much to offer a visitor. For families, there's the Children's Museum and the zoo. However, many do not realize all of the haunted legends that are associated with Indy. For this episode, we have a list for you of 10 most haunted places in Indianapolis that we find fascinating. Now, some of these you may not be familiar with. Some are long-held legends. So sit back and relax. And if you're feeling brave, we have a lot of tales to share with you. an episode i've been looking forward to me too i love indy i do too it's really one of my favorite places to visit mine too i lived in the suburb of greenwood for many years and worked at the downtown indy marriott and loved it there are so many places to visit and things to do there's lots of ghost stories wrtv and the only in your state website have some lists available online and when we were looking at those that really inspired us to do this episode and do a little bit of further research into some of the places that we have not heard of before. A couple of them we have. I will be sure to link these websites in the notes. There are a lot of interesting places reported to be haunted. So many, in fact, that we're going to break this episode into two parts. Well, let's start off with two legends that are from Mary's alma mater, Marion University. Now, the first two places on our list are going to sound familiar to our listeners. We've covered both of these mansions in season one episode nine number 10 on our list is the allison mansion at marion university marion university is a private roman catholic college it was founded in 1851 by the sisters of saint francis in oldenburg indiana the college moved from oldenburg indiana to indianapolis in 1937 the ghost stories from marion seem to focus on two of the campus buildings the allison mansion and the wheeler stokely mansion Yes, that seems to be where most of the legends come from. I actually have had experiences in both of those buildings. The Allison Mansion was built between 1911 and 1914. It was built for James Allison. Mr. Allison is known for helping fund and build the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, along with Frank Wheeler and Arthur Newby. He was also famous for forming the Allison Transmission Company, which is still in business today. He had a car racing team in 1915. He also founded the Allison Engine Company, which now is owned by Rolls-Royce. And something interesting is that he had a fountain pen company and founded Prestolife, which is an auto headlight company. The Allison Mansion at the time it was built was unlike any other home of its time. In fact, according to a February 28th, 2018 Culture Trip article by Courtney Johnson titled A Brief History of the Allison Mansion in Indianapolis, Indiana, the Allison Mansion was called the House of Wonders. The Allison Mansion had an indoor pool and an elevator. 
The university acquired the mansion after Mr. Allison's death in 1928. Over the years, the mansion has served the university very well. At one time, the library was located in the Allison Mansion. It has served as classrooms and offices, and the sisters also used to live at the mansion on the top floor. Today, the mansion is used by the university to hold receptions. It's a beautiful building. I've been there many times for a lot of uh, Mary's music receptions. While I was in school there, it was used to host music department concerts, holiday dinners, and the basement pool was available for students to swim. Was the Allison Mansion the site of the holiday dinner? Where a girl told you the cranberry sauce was not real because it didn't have the lines on it? Yes, hope it was. Too funny, I forgot about that story. There's a legend about a little girl drowning in the swimming pool many years ago. I've heard the legend, but I could not verify this with any information on the web. I heard about the little girl drowning after my ghost experience. My first ghost experience at the college was during my freshman year. They still had the pool operating at the time, and students were allowed to do evening swimming. One night, a few friends and I decided to go swimming late. The lifeguards had gone home already, and we were the last ones there. I ended up having to use the bathroom, so I went to the one next to the pool room. And while I was using the toilet, I heard the sound of a little girl laughing in the stall next to me. I quickly finished and ran out to ask my friends why they were playing tricks on me, but there wasn't anyone there. My friends were all still in the pool, and no one else was around. I didn't know about the legend of the little girl drowning until I told my story to our RA a few days later. That's very creepy, but it wasn't the only thing that happened to you at the Allison Mansion, was it? Correct. My second experience was during our spring choir concert. The choir would perform concerts in the aviary every spring and fall, and we would use the upstairs area as dressing rooms. The ladies' dressing room that year was what it what used to be the master suite of the home, and during those two days of the concerts, we kept having odd things happen. Our belongings would be moved. We would come in the next morning to find all the choir dresses off their hangers and laying on the floor. Chairs would be overturned. The thing is, no one was allowed in the house after hours, so nothing should have been moved. That's very scary that the things were moved. This brings us to the next item on our list. Number nine on our list is going to be the Wheeler Stokely Mansion, which is also at Marion University. Well, curiously, it's neighbors with the Allison Mansion, not very far from it at all. So the Wheeler-Stokely Mansion was built in 1911 for Frank Wheeler. And Mr. Wheeler co-owned the Wheeler, and I don't know how to say this, but it's the Wheeler Shelber Carburetor Company. Had to Google the name. And apparently they made carburetors and they were a pretty big deal. They used to make the carburetors for Ford and Dodge. And one of the things I love about this house is the little Japanese tea house and the garden. It's really beautiful. That is correct. Mr. Wheeler was also involved with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. However, he committed suicide in the home in 1921. Our podcast is growing, and it's so exciting to see all of our new followers on social media and all of the many downloads of our podcast. Most of our listeners come from iHeartRadio. However, we are on all the major podcast platforms. If you like what you hear, please don't forget to give us a five-star rating on whatever podcast platform you are listening to us through. Your comments and likes help others find us. Thank you for tuning in to the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast. Now back to our show. According to an October 30th, 1990 article in the Carbon newspaper, Mr. Wheeler may have decided to end his life due to health issues and business problems. It's very sad. The article by John Matlam says that Mr. Wheeler was a diabetic and was facing gangrene in both of his legs. Campus lore says that Mr. Wheeler's spirit haunts the home. I think it's very interesting that the campus newspaper mentions people who have seen Mr. Wheeler's ghost. Yeah, according to the article, there was an assistant professor of music whose name was Sarah Reed, and she saw something that she believed was Mr. Wheeler's ghost. She was at the mansion rehearsing one night when all of a sudden she sees this man appear before her in the room that was across the way. She only saw him briefly, but a student that she was working with saw the ghost, and the student refused to return to that rehearsal room. No one really used Stokely Mansion while I was a student because it was administrative offices at the time. My senior year, they ended up hosting a scary movie night in the living room area of the mansion. They turned off all the lights, shut up the rest of the house, except for the main floor bathroom. There was no one else there except for us 20 or so students and a couple of RAs. 
But the entire movie, we kept hearing people walking around upstairs. We even called the campus police at one point because we thought someone had broken in, but they didn't find anyone. And after they left, the footsteps started up again. We were so scared, we ended up ending the movie and went back to our dorms. What about the dog walk? There is also this popular legend about the dog walk being haunted. The legend goes that if three people walk up to the back door together, the person in the middle knocks on the door five times and asks if Timmy can come out to play. You turn, link your arms, walk the length of the dog walk, and legend says that about halfway down, you should hear footsteps and then dogs barking. So did you try it? Of course I had to try it. So me and two friends went out one night, followed all the steps, and we were expecting it not to work. So you can imagine our surprise when we got halfway down and actually heard dogs barking. We ran all the way to the big fountain in the middle of campus, and when we turned around and looked back at the dog walk, we noticed the shadow of a man walking near where we ran from. I also like the story in the article about the police officer who had an experience, so I'm going to read from the article. One evening, a campus security officer came into the music building, turning on the necessary lights, and after making his rounds, started to leave. That's when he heard the jingling of keys. Upon inspection, he found that no one was in the building. Once again, he was about to leave when a door slammed. This door is the one that guards the top of the third floor staircase. This is where Wheeler had once had a pool table and a gun collection. The officer went up these stairs and found the door locked. That's when he called for assistance. Determined to find the student that was causing all of the shenanigans, both police officers searched the building. They found no one. They shook off their uneasy feelings and started to leave when the door slammed again. This time, the Indianapolis Police Department was called in to help. Still expecting to find a student, a canine unit was sent. The dogs searched the house thoroughly. Suddenly, the topping of Dogtown L ceased echoing throughout the house. The dog had come to the front of the third floor stairs and had stopped. Despite the commands of the trainer, the dog only whined and cowered on the floor. The trainer was alleged to have said, whatever is up there, it's not man or beast, and I don't need to see it. I love this. Can't believe they have an actual police report on record about it. Number eight on our list is Paul Rustler Park. Where the park sits today used to be two old farms. The families who lived on these farms established a cemetery, which you can still see the steps to if you are traveling Prospect Street. Well, you can actually see the steps to this cemetery where Touchstone Drive and Prospect Road meet if you look on Google Maps. And I was able to look it up and check it out. And from the images, it looks like the cemetery actually only has a couple of visible markers left. The ghost associated with the park goes back to the Civil War era. The name of the ghost is not known. Legend says that back during the Civil War, a 12-year-old boy was walking along the railroad tracks that used to be near the farm. The boy was killed. No one really knows if a train hit him or if something else happened to him. He was playing his harmonica when he died. Legend claims that he was buried there in the area of the park, and some claim he is in the cemetery, and others claim he's under the foundation of his old house. People report hearing the sound of a harmonica playing, and no one is around. There are also reports of seeing the spirit of a boy walking where the train tracks once were. Number seven on our list is the Indianapolis Athletic Club. This was the site of a pretty horrific fire on February 5th of 1992. The fire made national news because the jury that was hearing Mike Tyson's rape trial was being held in the building at the same time as the fire. Now, this fire also had a lot of influence on not only Indiana, but on national safety standards. In the early morning of February 5th, 1992, a fire broke out in a bar that was located on the third floor of the building. Investigators thought that there was bad wiring in a refrigerator that probably caused the, the blaze. The fire department received a 911 call around 12.06 a.m. And according to the fire report, there were four engine companies sent to investigate. Two trucks and two chief officers were also sent. It's impressive that according to the report, the first company arrived about a minute and a half later. Well, when they got to the scene, everything looked okay. They even reported it as nothing out of the ordinary. However, about 20 minutes after the first fire company arrived on the scene, the fire became tragic. Two firemen and one guest were killed, and four firemen were seriously injured. Before this fire happened, it was not mandatory for all firemen to have a radio. Yeah, apparently fire departments were not required to have training on how to use any safety equipment. There was also no training on how to use the oxygen masks, and there was no policy in place for how to fight a fire in a high-rise building, which is pretty terrifying to think about. Well, something good did happen because of the tragedy. The building did not have a sprinkler system since it had been built in 1922. 
Buildings today are required to have a sprinkler system. The athletic club closed in 2004 and it is now condos. The spooky thing is that the residents of the condos have reported the spirit of a fireman trying to wake them up in the night. Legend says that it is the spirit of one of the firemen trying to save the residents from the fire that he couldn't stop. Number six on our list is the Indiana Repertory Theater. Mary and I have been there. It's a really beautiful place. It is really neat. The theater was built in 1927 as the Indiana Theater, and it was originally built to be a movie theater and a ballroom. The building's huge, and it's six stories tall, and at the time it was built, it was advertised as being the largest theater in Indiana at the time. The legend about the building is that there was once an artistic director who used to jog in the building when it was raining or poor weather. One day, the man was killed by an accident in front of the building. There's some conflicting reports about the accident. Some versions you'll hear, it was the man's nephew who hit him. In other versions of the story, it was a hit and run and no one knew the identity of the driver. The legend is that during rain or bad weather, you can hear the old floorboards creak as if someone is running. Some have even claimed to have gotten a glimpse of a shadowy figure jogging. Have you ever had an experience at an Indianapolis location? Are you familiar with some of these legends? We would love to hear about it. Please send us an email to whosyourmissinglegends at gmail.com. We may use it in a later episode. In the email, let us know if you wish to remain anonymous. To see our source material, please visit our website, whosyourmissinglegends.com. Please find us and follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast is a Quigley Virtual Services production. Our theme song was written and recorded by Wet Blanket. The song title is Taxidermy Race Car. As always, stay spooky. <laughs>